Hello, I'm Mayor Nicole LaChapelle, and this is my Thursday update. I was lucky enough to be asked to speak at East Hampton High School today for Women's History Month. I asked the students to think about a few questions and to remember three things as I spoke to them. One, the word overlooked. Two, when does a falling tree make a noise? Three, when does a person exist publicly? When are they considered famous? I started with some philosophy, asking if a tree falls in a forest and no one is around, no animal, no person, does it make a sound? Is that sound recorded? And the same idea is a thought, an idea, an action, historical, if it's not recorded. In a public sphere, does a person exist? Are they famous if that thought, idea, action that they're responsible for is not recorded, not memorialized? Okay, just follow me here. This is what I asked the students to do, to think about Pericles, one of the ancient Greeks, considered to be one of the most prominent and thoughtful statements in the history of this planet, said, what we leave behind is not what is engraved in stone and in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. And let me repeat that. We leave behind what is not engraved in stone monuments, but is woven into the lives of others. I think Pericles' statement is true. What actually matters after we're gone is what kind of impact did we have on each other? What kind of influence did we have on our family, our city, our country, and our world? Then, at this point, I asked the students to come back and think about the word overlooked and how I asked them to remember it. A couple of weeks ago, the New York Times for Women's History Month started to publish obituaries of people, women, over time that the paper never wrote, never published, never memorialized. These women were overlooked. By the paper's own account, only one in five of the obituaries that they had published before they published the article with the headline, Overlooked, were women. That's 80% men. That's about the percentage of our current United States Senate. Now, that tree, and if it makes a sound question, what does it have to do with overlooked? If a woman makes a notable impact on our world and that impact is not memorialized, is not credited to a permanent manner to the woman who actually made the impact, the idea, the thought, is it history? Does this impact make a sound? Does it make a different sound if the impact is credited to a man? What are the consequences then that we live with? What kind of impact has this had on our collective psyche, on our thoughts, our ideas, our actions, our inspiration over history? What do we as a community miss out on? I asked the students to consider the wage gap between women and men for the exact same work and then asked, could the New York Times decision to not memorialize as many women as men make a sound not heard aloud, but quietly said or implied that over history, women do less, they think less, they contribute less? Could this one in five statistic suppress inspiration in a woman or in a woman's self-value because history is lopsided, memorializing more men than women? Is the wage gap connected to not naming, not printing women's accomplishments? I suggested to the students that yes, I do think the wage gap, the number of women in the US Senate, being in the history books, in the obituary section of the New York Times, in the rooms that decisions are made, does make a difference. And that the sound of a woman's voice is not heard, if not published, everyone loses out. Ideas that could help us and more of us have a higher quality of life. Overlooking, not considering all the possible ideas, regardless of who says them, makes us less and we can do better. The questions the students asked afterwards were strong examples of critical thinking and gave me a lot to think about. We should be very proud of our students and the broad expanse of inclusiveness they already possess and are thinking of how to go forward with. Have a great week, and I'll see you next Thursday.